Tracy, Charles, Jeff in Las Vegas. Good morning. 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 I'm wearing my special Vegas shirt because Preston is from Vegas, you know. So. I was going to say, Preston, you know, you and Preston are going to hit it off. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm a native, so I'm excited to talk to him today. Uh, Tracy, you know, social media has exploded with fan theories about the first season and what's to come for the second season. So many un unanswered questions. Do you enjoy that passion from your fans that these discussions just go wild about what they, what they think is going to happen? Definitely. We wanted to make a series that kids could talk about, that all fans could talk about. And we used our cast as our focus group, pretty much. Uh, they would get a script and they would have their own theories. And it was where some of them went. And then others, we were like, wow, that's a really good theory. Or, wow, she guessed that one. Um, you know, the, the kids were super passionate about the idea of where the show was going. So it gave, it made us really excited to do more twists and turns to keep people guessing. And Charles, one of my favorite aspects of the series is let's talk about the set design and the art direction for the show. Louisiana as a setting is just really helps bring out the creative sets and the props. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, you have characters, you have story, and then you have the location and the set. And uh, always, always kind of an important thing to me uh, that you get that unity. And um, we had the greatest production designer I've ever worked with, Chris Stahl. Uh, mainly because of how hard he had to work because we had to change that hotel over and over and over again. And then we had to make it a farmhouse in 1930. And it wasn't easy right down to, you know, making sure there were goats and chickens and a horse named Mr. What was his name? Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Fantastic, <laughs> who would the minute somebody, they say roll, would start whinnying like crazy. And uh, all the kids wanted to do is play with the goats. And uh, uh, but but from a standpoint of building the interior of the hotel and then we go into the future and in the present, they redo it um, by the end of the season. You know, there's about four, I guess, four different Tremonts. Uh, and it 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 you know, it became a puzzle basically. Okay. And uh, uh, you only have so much room for sets, but uh, we pulled it off and it, it took everybody, it took, a, it took a, a village to do it. You know, Tracy, expanding on that, I come from the world of sci-fi and Star Trek and one of the most complicated and tricky plot devices is time travel. So did you have any second thoughts in creating a show sitting around time travel for kids? There's always the question of, the rules of time travel and how people interpret it. And early on, my husband was sending me articles on time travel and it was one of those where we're like, why did we pick time travel? Or when we're you know, plotting something, but it allows for us to go into so many fun stories, meeting their parents, going back in the past, going into the future. And I think the thing with time travel is we're not trying to, to solve anything as far as these are the these are the definite rules of all time travel. The great thing about movies and TV is you can establish your own rules. And that's what we did. And Char Charles, cons considering that you can't stop puberty and each season the kids are returning older, would that reflect on where the stories are heading maybe for future seasons, matching the maturity, kind of like what Harry Potter did? Absolutely, I mean, it's a really good question. Uh, uh, as they've grown up, you know, we always felt there was an attraction between Harper and Jess uh, and I'm sorry, Harper and Griffin. And we, you know, right from the beginning, you could kind of feel it, you know, two loners, the new kid, you know, and it was set up. But they were they were awfully young and, you know, nobody really had an interest in doing it um, except for Tracy and I. And and so we slowly began, you know, to build it. And then in the second season gave us the opportunity uh, because they did get so much older because of COVID delays and things like that, to really to start to explore first love, uh, which is a favorite theme of mine because it's the most relatable thing on earth. Everybody remembers that first person they fell in love with and uh, or, or thought they did, you know, or had a crush on or all the words that are used. It's, it, they, today's generation, it's no different and it's just as important. So that. To me, that kind of thing keeps people tuning in as much as ghosts and mystery and time travel. Well, Tracy, Charles, congratulations on a season two for Secrets of Sulphur Springs. What a great family show. Uh, I enjoy it very much. Only two episodes in the second season. So I'm here for the long haul. So thank you both for joining me today and happy holidays. Thank, thank you. you. You as well. Say hi to Preston. <laughs>
Valeu.